Hello, my soccer universe. Let's talk Champions League playoff. Uh, more or less right after the game and before me even talking about the, what happened last weekend. But I thought now that it's fresh in my mind, I'm going to do this first part and I'm going to wait for the games that happen, what's actually already tonight. And then make a second part and I'll put it in one big video and we'll have a nice roundup for the first leg of the Champions League playoff round which sensationally had my team Lusk in there. Uh, it was a day of lots of firsts but it was bittersweet. Um, suffice it to say the town was buzzing. I personally was rather calm. I mean last week when we played against Basel on the back of this great result that we had in Basel I was nervous as can be but tonight I was kind of yeah savor the moment in a way uh at least i did for the most time and i uh, whoever i talked about everyone was talking about the champions league anthem the champions league anthem is finally played uh there were lots of firsts and again it was bittersweet uh for linz and also for austria uh first time that champions league anthem was played first time that lusk was wearing the starball logo on their jerseys um first time that the video assistant referee was in was at least available in Austria. So, you know, uh, it was in many ways a historic game against Club Bruges. Uh, yeah, who are, I mean, from the get go, although when you look at the squad, I didn't know too many players, except for Mignolet, of course. But you knew that they are a good opponent. Uh, the Belgium League, I would put above the Austrian League any time of the day, at least. Yeah. I mean, Bruges, Bruges, Brugge is, is a big name. Uh, the excitement even got to me. Um, I necessarily didn't want to get more uh, jersey. I know I always wanted to have a last jersey, but you know. Yesterday I bought for my wife, and I've, I will look at them closely in a, a new jersey video because I have uh, a few more. Um, I bought the jersey that they beat Basel in. I bought it for my wife because of the pinkish sleeves here. Look at those. This is a typically Austrian league jersey, I gotta say, in many regards. And for me, I got the new Cham Champions League or Europa League, the new European away jersey. It also has some special stuff that I've looked into with you. They issued one in pink with black um, pinstripes as well. And the white one will be available in the group stage. And they played in white yesterday. But yeah. So uh, it was nice to see the stadium uh, all decorated in Champions League stuff. Um, as I said, I was buzzing. Uh, and everyone around me, it was kind of, this was a big deal in town. Uh, that was for sure. And then, yeah, it happened. <laughs>
game started, kickoff, and right off the bat, Lask had a good chance. Uh, I think it wasn't even 20 seconds played, they had the first good chance. Uh, a few minutes later, um, another good chance, I think, after a corner, um, Holland hit the outside of the post. And another good chance, where I think Klaus, I think it was Klaus, if not Tete, uh, had a good chance, and pulled it wide. And then out of nowhere, a long ball from Bruch, who hadn't been on the field at all. Long ball of Bruch, and then seemingly the attacker, now that I reviewed it and I saw it myself, it was probably a fraction of side. At least it looked like it. I didn't see the lines. I would have loved to see the lines. Uh, but to me, he looked offside. And then he goes down in the box. I mean, Trauna, the... Uh, Barely touched him and he, he barely just feels the touch and goes uh, diving. It goes to video review. And I don't know how much the video assistant ref was drinking. I don't know how he didn't see the offside. I really would like to see that. And how he saw that, that, that this was a foul. I mean, from what I hear, they only looked at the offside. Ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Now, I don't like conspiracy theories, but the video assistant referee was a referee that last week awarded a non-justified penalty already uh, to the opponent of Austria, Vienna, Austria, Wien. So he had it in for the Austrians. I don't know what was happening there. Um, I was hoping that this long wait for the video assistant referee, the first time it was invoked in Austria, and it didn't work at all. I'm a big proponent, big proponent for the video referee, honestly. But not if it works like that. I mean, whatever they saw, absolute nutcases. Absolute nutcases to give the penalty. And uh, I even tried to detach myself. I mean, I saw a little replay on the phone in the stadium. It didn't look like much. I now saw it and I said, okay, let's really look at it frame by frame and try to see just objectively. No, this wasn't to me, this was not a penalty. I probably there was a touch, and if it goes too far, if there's a touch, yes, they're they always gonna give that foul. But the offside is not clear to me. So yeah, penalty is converted, although the goalkeeper was there one nil. More bad luck, I think, around the 20, 25th when um, a defender of Bruges wants to clear and hits the post. Where there was really pressure on. I think for the first twenty five minutes, Lask had three big chances. Bruges had the penalty and the half chance, and then the game kind of descended a little bit into madness and ended uh, 0 1 at halftime. Um, after the half, I gotta say, the first of all, the weather really got bad. There was a lot of wind uh, blowing in the way that Bruges was attacking, which was not good, and then the rain came down. And in those 15 minutes that the weather was really bad, uh, Bruges actually showed that they, I mean, you could already see it uh, before. Uh, every player is technically outstanding. Really uh, good players, but as a team that didn't work as well as Lusk did, I have to say. But they had their chances and our goalie Schlager had to save twice in... Uh, man, I really thought it's gonna be now 2-0. Uh, which was a typical, you know, this typical game that you often see that an outsider doesn't take their chances. And a more experienced team, although I'm not sure if experience would count in this case, but you know, a bigger team just makes their chances and that's usually, usually the difference. Uh, Lusk had maybe two more chances and, and so on, but I got the feeling early on it's gonna end 1-0 for Bruges. And so it did. Um, I'm not completely destroyed, to be honest. I still have the nice momento of having the Champions, heard the Champions League anthem that the tickets, which print the town tickets, have the Champions League logo together with the Lusk logo. I mean, those are things that no one can take away from me. I've been there. I saw this historic memory that the game didn't go that way. Yeah. But I think it's still not over. I have some slight hopes that uh, it might there might be another miracle. I mean, a 2-1 would send Lask through. Uh, yes, you need to win in uh, Bruges and it will not be easy and I would give them a 90% chance of advancing. But oh well, yeah, it was nice to be there. The game was not as nice. I, As I said, I liked, I liked overall the whole atmosphere. Okay, so with a day 
in between uh, things look a little bit different now there was no conspiracy theory if I look at the penalty foul it was more a clumsy and unnecessary challenge because it was on the side and it was going away from goal there was not really a need from my perspective to go in there yes he didn't mean to touch him but there was contact the uh, striker felt the contact and of course embellished a little bit on the fall but there's no way this is ever going to overturn uh, by a uh, video assistant referee. Uh, it was more the offside that booked me and it booked me mainly because there was a technically mishap happening. The uh, calibration line could not be well calibrated and then it's not clear and obvious to overturn it. And I see, you see, I've seen two things, one where he is offside, one where he is just not offside same they're both on the same line and with that you cannot overturn it's a little bit galling that um, due to a technical mishap you cannot calibrate uh, properly I maintain he would the uh, striker was probably a tad offside on the other side and I have to be honest I don't like and you've seen it in my videos, I don't like when they go millimeter, 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 is it offside or not. Uh, the perspective that you show on a camera, it looks like it's offside, but you know, it's uh, the wrong perspective. Uh, if it's on the same, I think it's much, much closer. And that way there is no clear daylight between them. So I have to swallow it that probably that was all right. Um, you know, I'd rather have this given not as an offside than an offside. I really hate, hate, hate it when someone has two millimeters in front and it's given off set. But okay, yeah, uh, there were enough chances uh, to turn that game around and everything's not lost. So, Lusk, I'm wearing your jersey. I'm back in video you see tomorrow. Uh, I decided to do it that way. Uh, and yeah, uh, we'll beat them in Bruges. Gotta do it. Ah, we'll see. Anyway, uh, let's talk quickly the other playoff games. Um, we had, of course, um, the ZF Cluj against Slavia when I saw the highlights. Uh, yeah, Slavia got a really nice opening goal at all. It was not that hard of a shot. But yeah, 1-0 uh, for Slavia. Uh, Cluj missed the penalty. Apoel and Ajax played out a draw and was a rather lucky 0-0 for Ajax. Um, Apoel had some chances. I mean, so did Ajax, but uh, the bigger chances were definitely uh, for Ajax. And then uh, yesterday in the evening, I actually saw quite some of young boys against uh, Jervena Svesta. And honestly, that was a crazy game. Um, young boys had many, many, many chances, took an early lead. But then due to a defensive error after a corner kick, I mean, the ball goes from the head like into the net. Uh, has to be uh, caught. Then really two big chances for young boys to regain the lead shortly thereafter. It was not to be Marcus Marin uh, misses them one for Javanes Vestab and a similar chance again for young boys. Young boys was dominating the game in every regard. However, right after the half, Javanes Vesta gets, <laughs> gets the goal. 2-1 and at that point and even starts to uh, dominate a little bit uh, and it was a um, VAR decision, I would say the correct one, that gives young boys a penalty to make it 2-2 then a goalkeeping mistake almost would have made 3-2. It was a rather unlucky draw for young boys uh, but Gervena says that you have to give them, they have to play every qualifying round and are a team that's hard to break down. Uh, even if you think you're the better team, you have to make your goals. Uh, that's a team that's never that says never die. And for that, you gotta commend them. Um, other games, Dinamo Zagreb Rosenborg. Um, yeah, was more was the expected 2 nil. I would say. Uh, the goals came in quick succession through a penalty and then a defensive error. I well, I didn't see many big chances from Rosenborg, but uh, also the same from Zagreb. And then the big result, and a little bit galling to me, Olympiakos against Krasnodar, a 4-0 uh, a galling because I didn't expect Krasnodar to be shot out of the park after they managed to win against Porto. 
uh, that's the first. But more importantly, uh, Olympiakos now makes it to the Champions League when Pauk, who is the clearly better team in my in my opinion, uh, in Greece got Ajax and had to be eliminated and now Olympiakos makes it uh, into the Champions League. Same old, same old. I have to say, um, yes, Krasnodar completely crumbled late in the game. Uh, was not showing much. So yeah, we have probably Olympiakos is a safe bet to be in the next, to be in the Champions League. Uh, where do I go from here? As I said, uh, you'll get today my last um, La Liga jersey review vi video tomorrow uh, or tonight. Tomorrow I will be shooting a Premier League uh, jersey review. So let's see about that. Uh, you'll get an unpacking video, of course, and yeah, we'll then start into the league again. So uh, it's gonna be exciting. I have to, you know, I'm a little bit recovered from the last game. I think I'm between pride and that it was a bitter defeat, but still we played in the Champions League playoffs and that can count for something. Anyway, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos or playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel, as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I'm going to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.